Oh, hi. Uh, yes, again, there was something that excited us quite a bit. Yeah. Maximum Impact movie. When did this come out? 2017? Yeah, 2017. And, uh, completely out of left field. Do we need a backstory behind this? Yes, let's at least briefly recap. Nobody heard about it or what it was as a movie. Right. Correct? What yeah. happened? I think it was because I had expressed a desire to see more stuff involving Matthias Hughes. Yeah, it was a, it was a Christmas request from last year. Uh, get me something with Matthias Hughes in it. And, <laughs> for Christmas. Uh, and uh, that was I'm like, for we we That's we. Funny. We, I, I think I passingly mentioned <laughs> wanting wanting to see stuff with Matthias. There's been lots of stuff where he's either a lame bad guy or not enough screen time. Most of the time, both. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this was one of them, correct? Yes, yeah, sir. Or this was either, either it's the one most of the most recent, recent one. Or... Yeah. Like, uh, I'm like, 2017, I know he hasn't seen this, so I just went ahead and pressed the buy button on uh, eBay and it ended up not even being he's <laughs> he Matthias has enough screen time in here to not be frustrated but he's not even on this yeah. this vast ensemble this this thing is nuts there's there's this yes there's there's a huge ensemble cast yeah. enough to to where we had uh, actually likened it to something almost like uh, an expendables rip off yeah only it would be a uh, Expendables with all the B movie actors. Yeah, but like, I Who mean, you get you get who or get what? The guy from the guy from the guy uh, from Treasure Raiders and Black Rose. Yeah, our uh, that, that Russian fellow. Our something of a Russian action hero man, yeah. Alexander Nevsky. Yeah, you get Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold. Eric, by Ling. By Ling. Oh yeah, Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. Uh, Danny Trejo. Your boy. Hey! Danny, Danny Trejo makes an appearance. Uh, yep. Can't believe we see him in something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who is man? Was he the guy that played Storm Shadow? You've uh, seen him before. Yeah, uh, I think so. Uh, Mark Dacascus. Dacascus. Yeah. Uh, of course, the before mentioned Matthias Hughes. Uh. And uh, we get a Baldwin brother in this one. Yes. <laughs> it's a... Uh, yeah. William. William Baldwin. There's a William Baldwin brother. So there's eight stars right there. People and stars and that guys. And uh, some of the other people that wouldn't really count as a star or a that guy, but still are, are yeah. some of the main characters. That's right. In it, remember, there's the other Asian lady that's that's like, yeah, second main protagonist in the whole thing. Yeah, there's that with lady. Alexander Nevsky. Yeah, and then there's the Hammer from Hell. The Hammer from Hell. And, uh, uh, the two, not one, but two, wisecracking young urban kids. Yes. Remember? It's the black kid that's a intern or something. Yeah. And then it's the other one that's a... that I think he works for the uh, CIA. One was with the Secretary of State. The other was with the CIA. Yeah, that's something right. Something like that. Yeah. The boxing kid. Yeah. The boxing kid. Yeah, so... I mean, in total on It's like 15 freaking people. Yeah. And, I mean, the thing of it is, is whenever you do a movie like this... With all those people, uh, there's gonna be, and like, whenever you do a balanced, uh, you try to take a balanced approach. But this movie really doesn't try to take a balanced approach. What do you mean balanced approach? Giving everybody, giving everybody around adequate screen, screen time. time? Well, yeah, but I mean, you would have the main protagonist, main antagonist, man. Yeah, they they do. They take up a lot of screen time. I am thankful that Matthias Hughes actually gets quite a bit. Lines, yeah. He gets lines. Yeah, the past few things I have seen with him, he had 
like none or next to no and lines. The the uh, appearance that he has, like he's not shirtless. He's not supposed to be this uh, big oh, muscle man yeah. or nothing but a just. He's wearing nothing but a mini boss near the end of the movie or something. Yeah. Yeah. He's just wearing like a nice little touristy outfit, which to me seemed kind of out of place. But it's older Matthias Hughes. Well, he wears so. cool suits. Yeah. He gets to participate in the uh, those blue camouflage things. Yeah. The UN soldiers or whatever it is. Anyway, what do we get for a film? Oh, well, it, uh, it's another one of these things that is very, how shall we say, foreign audience friendly. Yeah. It's another one of these more recent things where they're uh, thinking with maybe Russia or China yeah. viewers in mind right. to uh, recoup their, uh, what's it called, foreign box office girls. Yes. The funny thing about that is I remember reading that this thing didn't even make $37,000. Million or thousand? Thousand. <laughs> Not even, like, disc sales. Like, that means right around probably 3,500 people bought the movie on disc if you're gambling on each Blu-ray being, like, 10 bucks or something. Uh, but, I never did any internet research. Did it have a theatrical release in... I don't... Russia? Or? I don't think so. I think this is one of those direct-to-videos, direct-to-disc movies. Okay, well, I, so, I genuinely wish it would have made more money than that. But, I mean... In the hopes of getting a sequel. But anyway, yeah, it takes place in Moscow. Yes. There is a... What is it? Summit meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State coming to Moscow. That's right. To discuss sensitive U.S.-Russian relations, correct? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, politically current, but, uh, I think they literally hit you off with the ground running, because once you press play, you're greeted with the oral pleasantries of, uh, banging oh, hip-hop you get track. music, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's something a, almost as funny as the Yodi Yodi Yaz. Take a look around. That's and uh, <laughs> and uh, it begins with, um, what is it? The Russian equivalent or... or the FSB. Yeah, what what the new KGB is. FSB, yeah. Russian, Russian CIA or whatever. Yeah. Where you have to go around they, uh, to local organized criminals yeah to implore them to not yeah do very much on violent crime on during the, the summit during the summit because yes. it's an elevated terror threat yeah and that the law enforcement <laughs> and FSB groups need to focus that's right on the terror threat situation because there's instead of being like limited distracted re by yeah limited resources so Instead of doing traditional mobster Russian stuff, can we please just lay low for a couple just days? Just a couple days, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, great. So anyway, it's a cool fight scene with... And and w did we learn his name, or are we just going to call him the Hammer from Hell? Let's just call him Let's the call him, from yeah, the Hammer from Hell, that's good. Uh, and yes. what what amusement I got and, and immediate excitement I got from this, because remember, we were just watching this... Uh, because of Matthias Hughes. That's right. And because of this a little bit of a, appeal of some of these yeah. non-stars in it. Um, and then you got your funny hip-hop song at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it continues to hit the ground running with Hammer from Hell. How, how, how did we describe that? Uh, why it was so amusing. It's... Uh, it's a... Uh, the... It's a cocaine... Oh, who did, who did we liken him to with the... It was it was the quick editing, the fast-paced banter. Um, Tarantino? Morton Downey Jr. Oh, Downey Jr. Iron yeah. Man. Yeah. In the in the MCU, the, the, the 
It, and all, all the stuff nowadays that where they have where everything's super fast paced. Yeah, like like they think people in the new millennium are, are more advanced cerebrally or something. Right. Wrong. Yeah. Anyway, the funny banter that goes a hundred miles an hour. Talk yeah. About, uh, because the guys in his tech support with the uh, headquarters. Yeah. The, on the com link, and he's like, "How are you doing today?" Or, or uh, hope, hope hope you hope you ate your Wheaties today. And yeah. He says something like something wise. Crack. And it's it's this smooth guy thing anyway. It's a comically he's got his suit and he's, yeah, he's, he's adjusting his cufflinks all the time. Yeah. Oh yes, I had a great breakfast and I got laid last night, man. Yeah. Very American. You're supposed to think it's hilarious <laughs> in these exchanges between the two of them. Uh, well, how does it even go? It, what are we doing with these scumbags? Yeah, what, and I am down by the docks? They're rolling Knocking up. on the door of these scumbags? Me, the hammer from hell? Yeah, and the magic trick behind getting them to open the door is like the hammer from hell waving into the camera, and they somehow open it up. Oh, yeah. Well, he, even, he lip syncs the words, open the door. Even though they're, like, supposed to be bitter rivals. But the thing of it is, is you gotta open up the door so you can have that conflict inside the cocaine. Yes, it happens within three seconds. Yes. It's piles of horse crap to throw off um, it, drug yeah. canine units? Probably. Because <laughs> it has... <laughs> That's probably the reason why they have it, it, it's giant. <laughs> I mean, let's be real here. That that thing probably throws off an odor like nobody. Like, <clears throat> that thing will knock you out. Anyway, you give it another about 20 seconds of of idiot banter that's, that's supposed to be the most hilarious thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And then you get a rip-roaring fight scene that starts with this freaking... Whatever, what would it be like? A ten-pound bag of cocaine just dropped on the oh, a bag of shit. Or, yeah, some, somebody threw a bag down on him, and then all of a sudden everybody starts fighting, and it's a yeah, it's a grand awesome. old time. And... It's one of those that's that's so ham-handed, <laughs> like a like a like like when you need a bar fight, or if it's a kids' show, it's a food fight. Yeah, in any of those scenes that just happens like this, and you may as well just turn on some some abrupt banjo music. And, yes, and, yeah. Yeah, so, if I remember right, after that, they have to cut back to the uh, CIA. After Well, you gotta cut back to everything there, because yeah. you gotta introduce this group and this bad guy. Yeah, and, yeah. there's a lot to introduce, but our uh, very competent and professional CIA fellows are uh, pulling a prank on one of their office members. I need a favor, <laughs> and your discretion. Of course. Can I count on you? <laughs> Absolutely, Mr. Secretary. Well, here's the rub. I I can't be an effective negotiator if I'm all tense, you know, my poor purple bunghole puckered up so tight I can crack walnuts with her. Uh, what can I do? Well, I'm gonna need some stress relief. I need you to score me an ounce. Scratch that, make it two ounces of weed, ganja, magambo. You, you feel me? Just stinky stuff. Uh, but Bai Ling uh, gets wind of this mid-call and does not approve. So we are, uh, on top of the disapproval of the prank call, uh, evidently the, uh, I think the guy's name is Jacob in the, I think the, uh, inner city man's name is Jacob. So we're sending Jacob to Moscow to cover, to help cover for the president or an ambassador going over to do the peace talks. So, plus not to mention Jacob's dad lives over there anyway, so, I mean, who else better to send but Jacob, but there's, uh, I can't remember, I, I think Jacob gets to pick somebody that goes with him, and they pick, a, wait, no, the, the younger Asian lady was a part of the Secret Service, so Bai Ling and Jacob get to go to Moscow, and then when, uh, when we get introduced to Eric Roberts, and his uh, sec his meeting before the Secret Service to go to Moscow. We get introduced to evidently the daughter who somehow instantly knows the 
Instagram handle of this famous Russian uh, pop groups, rock groups. Eric Roberts' granddaughter. Uh, name? What we're talking about is that, that there's, there's numbers of yeah. different plot threads in our ensemble cast and different factions of guys and characters and, that was and all, groups. Like what, what we... That what, uh, introduce who they are. What we just summarized was the setup, and it takes longer to summarize the setup than it actually takes in the movie. They say what they're going to do. <laughs> well, it took so. forever to... Because, remember, the Hammer from Hell gets a concussion. Oh, yeah. So him and Alexander Nevsky actually have to trade places. Yeah. Where you, you're supposed to get more comical buddy cop stuff. Because uh, Nevsky is a little like, short guy. The Hammer from Hell doesn't know the computer tech. Yeah. Everyone's, back at headquarters to support the person in the field. Everyone's out of their element. And then, yeah, the other guy has little experience in the field. Great. So that's funny as hell. Plenty of comical relief, yes. Uh, your other couple people that you get in the Americans, the CIA or the Secret Service slash uh, Secretary of State yeah. employees. What was our great story arc and character arc with um, Roseanne Man? Oh. What happens with him? He was boxing. Yes. He was complaining. Yeah. Uh, about he, there's one line where he talks about pretending to. It was uh, what, what is what is Tom Arnold's story? Yeah, well, I mean, Tom Arnold mainly in the movie serves as a vehicle for incontinence jokes. And <clears throat> yeah, eighty percent of the time he's on the screen, he has to go to the bathroom. Yeah, more than that. <laughs> most most of his screen time is about uh, about being incontinent. Yeah. In uh, his prostate issues. Yes. Or, uh, uh, what's it called? Prostate. Prostate. Issues of, yeah. um, uh, wanting to ask his other employees if he can go mm -hmm. grab a whiz. That's a great plot thread for, uh, Mr. Arnold to have. Uh, we haven't talked about, uh, Mark Dacascus and Matthias Hughes' plot. Oh, yeah. Who are our villains, uh, for the film? There was, uh... People doing bad stuff. I think, uh, I think it counts as an independent front. Uh, Mark Dacascus and Matthias run, like, a weapons smuggling operation, I think. You don't figure it out, but they're working for what's-his-name, and they're there to... Oh, yeah. What is it? Drive, uh, three different Porsche SUVs. Okay, yeah. Correct? That's a key. That's key. They're doing some paratrooping. Yeah. Aren't they? They're in, they're in some kind of airplane. I think so. I Put vaguely fake remember license that. plates on cars. Yeah, and uh, because yeah. remember he says it's a racket. It used to have California plates, so he's holding the old plate. Yeah, when like, he switches with the uh, Russia fake Russia license plate, and he and, and he says, "What is it?" I think it's like just about the same or something. Hollywood Hills. Yeah, I love that town. And like and then we, he looks off into the distance to suggest. Moscow, and then he's like, "I love that town. This one too." Yeah, like you're you're supposed to. We got to point out you're supposed to really love. Yeah, city of Moscow. You're supposed to. Otherwise, they have the uh, shots. I believe most of it is on location in the town of Moscow. Yeah. So you have the one. You have the building from Tetris. The Kremlin? The this, yeah, yeah. Where everything has a top that's shaped like that. I think you have the red fort, too. You There's get the this. red square. Uh, uh, it's a, a, a unseasonably nice day in yeah. Moscow town. Everything's green. They filmed it in June or July or yeah. something. The canals and, are, like, uh, not frozen over at all. Yeah, you're in this You're <laughs> in this super charming, so quaint Eastern European city. So, yeah, there's your... Uh, I love this. Or, yeah. I love that town. This one too. Yeah, yeah. There's your uh, Dukakis 
uh, Matthias thread. Uh, Danny Trejo. <laughs> whatever, whatever they were doing. Whatever they were doing. Anyway, they do bad stuff. Uh, I think they uh, provide the plot action for the, uh, what's it called? Terrorist yeah. situation. Because after all, if you want to wreck Russia's economy, or, or a country's economy. Terrorism. You instigate a crisis. Yeah. It works. One of the best ways to do that is to take advantage of a elevated terror threat. That's right. You want to you want to plot situation. it. Yeah, you, you want to plot it while security is high. You just uh, it, it mostly revolves around the attempted kidnapping of the yes girl. Remember, that's what they're doing. They kidnapped the uh, Justin Bieber and the girl. Yes, because uh, what's her name? The uh, sec- U.S. Secretary of State's granddaughter. It was uh, against Eric Roberts' wishes, but the the granddaughter found a way to sneak onto the plane. Oh yes, that's pretty classic comedy. She stows away. She's in the back on Air Force One. Yeah, yeah. She's sitting by the commode, texting on the internet, and it's a good way for Tom Arnold to get a plot relevant <coughs> joke in, in boy. Air Force One. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, you better take so. advantage of any opportunity to do the incontinence joke. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, you're you're just <laughs> stampeding your way. Yeah, seriously. Through this, like blistering. Yeah. Tour de force of plot threads, a location, um, d- demonstrable capability. Yeah, I mean, really nothing else to call it. Of, of carpentry skills. Yeah. And uh, lassoing, there is a mobile tech lab. Yes. In the movie. About halfway through, uh, who was it that got, oh wait, that was the collaboration tech lab between the uh, FSB and... Uh, the In the interest of cars, mm-hmm. you get a lot of car action. You do. There's a lot of those where the police has to stop a random yeah. motorist and say, uh, Police emergency, I need your car. Yeah, you get some, you get great cars. Oh, what yeah, you? you get a bitchin' yellow Audi wagon. Yeah. That thing actually does kick ass. Uh, let's see, who did we fail to mention? You were saying him a minute ago. Trejo? Oh, yes, he <laughs> does a... Funny voice. Yeah, he does. That's uh, he does he does uh, some kind of funny thing where he's like, "Hey, wait a minute! Don't hit him with a crowbar on the white carpet because no. you're gonna get blood." And remember, there, there was yeah. like, "Wait, I already I already got poop stains on the carpet. Now I got that poop and blood." Yeah, there was plenty of uh, Cialis and Viagra jokes. That's how they introduce his character, where he's like overdosing on. Uh, like yeah, he takes one of each. Double dose. <laughs> so, like, and uh, for those, for fans of King of the Hill, you you would recognize the comical. Uh, oh, is that what Danny it is? Trejo voiceovers? Okay, yeah. because uh, I mean, I like it. I can't stand that damn cartoon. Now listen. First off, I'm not a crook. Second, I'm not stupid. Terrorism's bad for business, okay? Consider it done. Hank, it's Salmon. They put Salmon in the fish tacos, Hank. What are you talking about? Look at it. It's Salmon. They're ruining everything. Oh, no, not the fish tacos. Just a minute. Let me go over here. Yeah. I'm around the corner. Now I'll show up around the other corner. I love, dude. Whenever I first heard that voice, I cracked the hell up. I was like, oh, man. Keep busting out the Enrique yeah, voice. Sometimes yeah. you need to bring out uh, yeah. something So, for appeal purposes. I mean... And he goes through the movie, too, doesn't he? Uh, he has, a, he has he, his scene in the beginning, and then he has a more prominent role in the end. Oh, he's not gone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, good guys and bad guys uh, uh, teaming up. Yes, you you kind of find common ground or a, a yeah. common enemy with your yeah with your man. Yeah, it's it's all about uh, shifting alliances and uh, 
Otherwise, there would be no reason for him to... Yeah. He, he may as well just work for Mark Dacascus. That's right. <laughs> but, uh... Anyway, hilarity ensues. It is a... Plot chock full... Of... Funny mistakes. Tell me about Funny it. events. Funny occurrences. However those work. Yeah. And like buddy cop things or mystery movies or I mean or action comedies where you have uh, some kind of minor mix up or yeah or somebody needs to go in to a building pretending to be a different man yeah or 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 use a use a funny fake voice on the phone to make a fake phone call to get some information yeah all that stuff you're going through the movie and you got one of those at. Any freaking Any time. time. Very entertaining and fast paced. And the cool uh, fun fun to watch. The cool thing is is like it never gets old with that movie because they have so many witch ways and character interactions to use. It's a girl dressed up like Justin Bieber. That's right. Uh, next thing you know, it's one of the two uh, Asian girls that's one of the secret agents that's that's crawling around with people's feet and people's legs underneath a yeah, summit meeting table. Yes. Like next thing you know, after that, you're driving around in one of those giant armored mobile tech labs, and ripping out the freaking uh, distributor cap or something. Yeah. When you're hot wiring the lab, truck. and with, like the tech guy always has to mess up somehow. I think, uh, I think the plot, the thing you were referring to, was like there was like a tracker chip that they left inside the truck. So he rips this thing out. He's like, <laughs> "And didn't I do a good job?" And of course, it's the wrong part. Yeah, it's you. You just took out the check engine light. Yeah, exactly. Like it's you. You get you get hilarity like that it, all the time. All the time. Isn't that? Wasn't that kind of the point of the Expendables movies? Kind of. It's a massive cast. Yeah. Of fond old people. Or that guy's or something. If you don't tune in for the action, you, you tune in for the comedy. Constant hilarity. Yeah. Only with this... And over-the-top action. Ugh. With this, it's the other way around. You tune in for the comedy and you get a little bit of the action. However intentional. Oh, well, yeah. It's, the which, whichever one... Which, whichever, <laughs> whichever one is... Uh, is... While you're there. Ugh. I, I came for the Matthias Hughes... Stayed for the different people, yeah, as well as the action and the comedy. That's right, and but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I I got such a kick out of it because of how bad they're they're trying to reproduce this this formula, yes, or use this formula to reproduce this result, yeah, and where it's a where it's a Expendables with a with a buddy cops thing and a and a and a, and a high speed banter. Yeah, it's freaking. Only this whole time you're supposed to be like enjoying the fact it's 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 amusing and interesting to see them try to get um, both American and uh, Russian audiences on board. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Because us, as, you know, crusty old podunk American guys in the dead middle of this country. Yeah. And they're trying to get us to to think Moscow is a cool city and <laughs> this and say something like, Yeah, well, don't you know any self-respecting uh, 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 Russian, you know, Son of the Rodina, something. Yeah. No, you, you better be doing that with irony, or 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 we're. Yeah. Just gonna be straight up laughing at it. Exactly, guys. Like, and like for and, me, and, anything where they try to appeal to audiences that are sometimes diametric opposites. Yeah, of that. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, uh, and try to straddle the different line or something. You were saying I was a big the appeal of. I was a big fan of how, like, 
I, I didn't know whether you were supposed to take the various factions of the movie seriously or not. It's one of those things where it's a comedy because so if they, you do start blaming them, it'll be like Tommy was Owen, Stan Durant. It'll be like they, yes, but we meant for that part to be silly. That's the thing though. It's like they flip between serious and funny, like uh, towards the beginning of the movie, all the setups are hilarious. But then they're supposed to go through and faithfully execute. Yeah, these you're plans still supposed to have end. a plot that you care about. So yeah. And I'm like, when can I start taking these guys seriously? <laughs> that was the that was the eternal question I was asking because the setup was damn funny, but the action was damn stupid. But it was damn awesome. And yeah, it was it's, action. It's, we we definitely can't. Um, Pointed out as so crappy of a thing. Yeah. Like the budget was enough to where it at least looked okay. Yeah. It looks like a movie. Uh, it was executed. We're going through. Yeah. You're, you you don't immediately look at it and say, you know, gosh, was this shot on video? Or, exactly. Or what? What do we always say? It must be Dumont Network time. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, it's it's poopish in qualities of of what what different viewers are trying to appeal to, what different formulas and and things that they're trying to uh, uh, emulate and rip off. Yeah, and some of the doo doo stars. It's when when it's when it's uh, a Baldwin brother. Definitely. Whether it be Stephen or William, it it can still be a okay budget movie, and and you show. Yeah, you show one of those one of those doo doo Baldwin brothers, and, and yeah, it, it's like okay, yeah, we have a stinker on our hands. Yeah, but this I I I recommend it so highly because of just how much fun it is. Oh, it's fun, and we can give them we can give the filmmakers their their credit of yeah what good job they were actually trying to do when when we're saying at least as far as the it's out fast paced action. Yeah. Plot chock full of the outrageousness, zany misunderstandings. Yeah, yeah. There, there's I, uh, what do you call them? Various various hijinks. I was and shenanigans. I was entertained from minute one, man. Like Venus Christensen. They, yeah, they, they yeah. They, it spells entertainment. That's for sure. So if you're interested in man, look him up. And the couple other things I've seen him in, which is another one of the things I got so excited because this involved him. Uh, it's the guy from Treasure Raiders. What was that other one? I believe it was on Netflix. Uh, it's only from a year or two ago, or maybe from 2016 or something. Uh, Black Rose? Yeah, that sounds familiar. to team up with the American girl. I think it's called Black Rose. That sounds familiar. But yeah, he's been in some cool stuff. William Baldwin. Let's briefly not forget oh, yeah. to mention William Baldwin's uh, freaking hair. Oh, yeah. The doo-doo... Uh... Whatever you call this, the thing that I can't do because I don't grow hair on the top of my head, but like the schwumback, would you call it a modified schwumback? Like it a, was an asshole spikes kind of kind of bedhead. Yeah, yeah. What whatever whatever that stuff has come into popularity and and he's the past however many years where where you have a. It kind of juts it's off. Supposed to be devil may care. Yeah. yeah. Whether, whether you're supposed to call it part of the bedhead or, or whatever it is. It's the thing yeah, too. It's, is it's a shithead spikes thing. You look at him on a screen because in the movie he usually barks orders at the henchman. Uh, well, I thought it was just a reversed image. I thought they just accidentally <laughs> had a, a ham-handed thing where one shot. It's parted going way going this way, but then the next one it just just you know oh. flipped a mirror image. But you I think it was just multiple different times where they did his hair up in, in a slightly different way. Yeah, I mean each time it did look a little different, didn't it? You get like a this and then you get like a Yeah. So like and you're you're looking at him and you're like this guy is like the mob boss. They're taking orders from William Baldwin. When he looks like a <laughs> fucking broken down William Baldwin, that a uh, yeah, 
that a hairstyle stylist quickly gave him a shit yeah these days spiked hair thing yeah it probably only took like two minutes before they pushed the button on the camera yeah so yeah, yeah. I mean, anyway highly recommended very yeah uh it would rank pretty high if I was gonna put it on a list gosh I haven't updated my top movie list for a long time me neither maybe, maybe maybe this would be in the top 50 or something extremely entertaining not so much in terms of of terrible production values, but uh, but uh, stupid as hell. Yeah. But also quite entertaining through and through. Yes. Yeah, I would have to summarize it exactly the same as well. Since I haven't seen as many movies, it would be in my top thirty. But uh, maximum impact. Yes. And you can get away with saying, whether whether ironically or not, it packs a punch. It does pack a punch. Yeah. You get him. Oh, I, I already completely forgot about the hammer from hell. Yeah. Him, man, uh, Matthias. You can't forget it's a Matthias Hughes movie. Yeah, it's a recent Matthias. He actually says a few lines. Yeah. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. You you just you just read the cast and you're like, oh wait a minute, oh yeah, he's in this too. Yeah. Who is Alfonso McCauley? He was probably the uh, intern kid. Yeah, I think so. Kelly Who. Alexander Nevsky, Tom Arnold. Which I think. I'm trying to find out the name of the Hammer from Hell. I think Kelly Who is the younger uh, Asian lady. The second, yeah, the one, the one that's not Bailing. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Mark Stokusis. Oh, is he Eveg, Evgeny? <laughs> yeah, Ev Evgeny Sk Stitchkin is probably the Hammer from Hell. Keith, Must be. Somebody named Keith Powers <laughs> is probably the boxing kid. And someone named Maria Bravakova. I think, I think there was the, a uh, Russian like lady cohort that uh, somebody that was involved in one of the factions somewhere. Yeah. And then what was what was our other man? Oh yeah, tell us quickly about Polina Butor, but, uh, Butorina. Polina uh, Butorina. Let's see. Yeah. Remember, she, was... she ended up being some kind of Eastern European lady. Yeah. Uh, girl, the teen, the stowaway, the yes. granddaughter. That's right. That yeah. either speaks really good English. Yeah. Or one of those things where their family moved to America when she was like one or two. Because if I was in the casting, if I was in casting, I would have reversed it. Because the, the male, the guy that was in the boy band, played a more convincing American than she did. I could tell. I could semi tell she was kind of Eastern European. Oh, okay. I couldn't. Yeah, good, good, good for you detecting that because I, I was none the wiser. But anyway, when you're going through the credits, yeah, what happens with the name Polina Budarino? Uh, that you wouldn't have known. Oh wait, she sings in the thing. Yeah, yeah she's she's responsible for like four songs out of the yeah out of the movie's uh, extensive soundtrack. Yeah, she does a good job singing, too. She's got a nice Where, voice. Where uh, the person who doesn't play a pop musician... That she... Yeah. It's... Ends up being a up-and-coming... Yeah. Teen pop star. That's right. So yeah, this this film really does have it all. It has it all. Yeah. It's a shame if it underperformed financially. Uh, did we learn that it didn't have a theatrical release? Yeah, I don't think it had a theatrical release. Um, uh, domestic or foreign side? No. Yeah. So it's it's just a dirty shame if it didn't uh, yeah. get a good enough uh, financial take. Tell me about it. Because I would have wanted to see a number of sequels. <laughs> I would have wanted to see a whole... Uh, a lineage. What's it called? Yeah, cinematic universe yeah. Or, uh, or or franchise. Yeah. With um, the Maximum Impact Gang. Tell me about it. I, I am not tired of Alexander Nevsky. No. I, I wouldn't mind seeing him in a number of other action buddy cop type things. Yeah. From what I've seen him in so far. Uh, same thing with the hammer from hell. Yeah, we need more him. 
Yeah, in 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 comic relief capacities and yeah, and and bantering smooth guy. Yeah, he did good. Almost Morton Downey Jr.'s Iron Man's. Yeah, he did real good with the banter and the wisecracks. Russian Iron Man. So, yeah. Polina Buterina. Whether or not she needs to be Eric Roberts' grandson every time. Granddaughter. Oh, yeah. Gr- <laughs> grandkid. Uh, yeah. Him, him, him or her. Uh, and basically the need, or not the need, but but how it, it would be A-OK if you brought back everybody. Yeah. Except maybe for Trejo. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty tired of seeing Danny Trejo <laughs> in stuff. Ugh. But, uh, yeah. They could they can have Mark Dacascos and Matthias Hughes. Yeah, I mean, come on. Would say William Baldwin fired the both of them. They become their own, or that they were presumed dead or something. Yeah, they yeah. they they go on without William Baldwin. Try to uh, get back at the the FSB or whoever. Yeah, and they get their. Gotta own... bring freaking Tom Arnold. He needs to pee even worse <laughs> in the sequel. Talking about, oh, no, not again. Yeah, all of Tom Arnold's scenes will be filmed in the bathroom. Uh, I, I thought mean. me and... <laughs> there's, there's no need to go anywhere else with him. <laughs> I thought me and Moscow could be finished. Yeah. And then you can get man, and then you can bring back Kelly Who. Yeah. And they can say, uh, here we go again. Exactly. See, it doesn't even need to do well to have a sequel. We just need a sequel. Kind of need a sequel. If they have enough other movies that they do during the year to where they can make enough money. Yeah. Thirty-seven grand did not even enough to pay the freaking actors. No. Maybe not even one. It's that would be like doing it, you know, in a in a charity. That's right. Function. Yeah. Yep. Highly recommended. So yeah, I wish. I don't think it will, will be. Correct? Right. R- realistically, there probably isn't going to be any others. No. Which, which should we say, that just kind of makes this one that much more special. Oh, you gotta cherish the one you get. Yeah. So. so. Maximum impact. Cherish. A lot, Cher- lot of freaking fun to go through. Yeah. Heck of a film from, from start to finish. Definitely. I got a call, babe. You won't be kissing me. Cause you've been kissing me. Oh Christ, not a cracker! What's up? Okay, close your eyes. Oh, how the heck did you get on my plane? My god, that air. <laughs>